Good morning, I'm Dr. Peacock. This morning I'm going to show you a patient, uh, an elderly patient in her 80s who had a chronic alteration on the distal tip of her right foot. And this actually resulted in some osteomyelitis in her toe. And she also had an unrelated issue with her second toe with the ingrown nail. And we corrected this with minimally invasive surgery when it preserved the, her digits so she didn't have to have an amputation. I'm going to show you that this morning. You can see the alteration, how significant it is when we first looked at her here. And this is uh, actually the day of, uh, this is a week before the surgical procedure. Uh, so we're going to go from here. Uh, this is how it looked when she presented to us, and uh, pretty chronic infection. You can see a lot of uh, undermining of the alteration here. What we did, we kind of, we did local anesthetic on her, and in the office, correct this using minimally invasive surgery. What we did was we did a bony castle with a, with a dorsal wedge, uh, to actually uh, wedge your hallux up to take pressure off of the distal tip of the toe. And at the same time, through the same portal, we removed a uh, hammer toe to form the hallux and also the, the bone infection, which, which occurred mostly in the uh, inner phalangeal joint. So we kind of denuded and, and, and pulled out the bone infection as well. This slide here shows our osteotomy. You already see the, the toes uh, basically straightening up here. Uh, our ultrasound view is not real clear there, but you can see where we denuded uh, dorsally there. We denuded the um, hammer toe deformity and removed infected uh, bony tissue from the uh, hallux interphalangeal joint area. We did this all under C-arm. This is a removal of that infected bone, and you can see our you can see how how involved this infection is in the hallux. So we cleaned all that up and basically took out. Uh, the majority of the head of the proximal phalanx and, and performed a wedge in the remaining bone here. This is how the bone looks now. You can see the, the, most of the bone infection out and the wedge out and uh, you can see the redundant skin here. That's how the bone looked on the x-ray. We cleaned it up as much as we possibly could here. Uh, it's kind of a closer up view of the same, uh, same plane there. So when we felt like we had adequate infection of the bone out and a good cut uh, we basically went on to uh, get our wedge performed a little better to wedge our toe upward. And you can see there where we're getting uh, some more of the bone infection out there. And we left, of course, we left this open so that it would drain out. So at this point, we had most of our infection kind of under control prior to the surgical procedure. Uh, take a rasp and clean out any remaining bone. This is how I looked on the operating room table. You can see the redundant skin we have here. Look at how much dorsiflexion we now have in the toe. And this is why we're going to get rid of the distal alteration there. We wrapped out with our normal standard bandage. And went ahead and uh, basically we took, took care of our ingrown nails while she was in the in here in the office. So basically just did us uh, our standard uh, ingrown nail procedure. We all do the uh, basic phenol in the ingrown nail procedure, which we had on the medial uh, part of the second toe there. So we did our onychoplasty here and then our three-step phenol procedure as well. So in this patient we take care of two problems for her and trying to get rid of the bone infection as well and I uh, didn't want this uh, lady to, to lose her toes and she really didn't want to as well. And mu must be noted that she had already had the, the uh, recommendation of amputation already by another provider, another surgeon. We wrapped it so we could keep an eye on the alteration, and here is the ulcer now. This is at eight weeks. Uh, toe is completely healed. Patient is happy. There's no pain. She had pain with this deformity. So we're able to correct this patient with minimally invasive surgery in the office under local anesthetic. She's kept her toe. She's happy. Uh, she basically baked us a big cake for doing this for her, and she gave it. She baked us a seven-layer chocolate cake and she's on the way back to see us in another month or so, but we're very happy. Also, her cardiologist was very happy because with the recommendation for amputation, she was going to have to undergo uh, general sedation, and he was really opposed to that. He had checked her circulation for us and told us that he thought that it would heal, and I told her what we had, we had proposed. He felt like there was uh, an attitude, there was no reason not to try it. So now we have a successful uh, removal of osteomyelitis from this toe, and actually a uh, successful surgery is healing up without any problems and the patient has her toe.